Have you ever visited a museum? This is the Dixon Gallery and Gardens. It's a museum in Memphis, Tennessee. Inside, we have art from all over the world. We have lots of different types of art, and the art is always changing. We put together several exhibitions, or art shows, every year. So every time you go visit the Dixon, you're going to see something new. But outside is just as special as the galleries inside. We have 17 acres of gardens. They're full of plants, flowers, trees, and many living things. At the Dixon, we have a whole team of people who look after the gardens and keep them beautiful. That might sound like a simple task, but there's a lot that goes into it. They have to make sure that the plants are getting enough water and sun, that they're planted in the right type of soil, that they're free from diseases and illnesses that could spread to the other plants. They know exactly what time of year to plant the seeds and they work hard to make sure that things are blooming all year long. Even in the winter, we can grow plants in our greenhouses. Some of the flowers stay in the gardens, some are used for flower arrangements, and others are sold at plant sales. And we have lots of unusual plants and flowers that take a lot of attention. The Dixon is famous for its tulips. We plant thousands and thousands of tulip bulbs every year for people to enjoy in the spring. Today, we're gonna to learn a little bit more about the Dixon's gardens, and we're gonna make an art activity that is inspired by these beautiful gardens at the museum. Today, we'll be making a painting using actual soil samples. If you're not using supplies provided by the Dixon's Art to Grow program, you can still do this project. You can go into your backyard and collect soil samples, or you can even visit your local nursery and try to get different colors of soil. Did you know that there are 12 different kinds of soils just in the U.S.? They vary depending on what kinds of minerals are present. That's what gives soil its different colors. Depending on what minerals are rich in the soil, they might be red, black, yellow, gray, or any kind of brown. Today, we are going to use actual soil from the desert in Utah to create our own project. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out our soil color. So we're going to look at all of the different soils and their names. And then we're going to take a look at the soil in our cup. We're going to take a look at the color, the texture, we can move it around, but we're not going to take the lid off. We don't want to touch it yet. So we're going to keep that lid on tight, but we can shake it around, we can look at it. After we've looked at it, we're going to observe, and then we're going to put our soil in our cup, and we're going to put it right on top of what we think our soil is on our paper. All right, let's get started with our drawing. We're going to start with our Sharpie, and on our paper plate, we're going to write our name. We will be writing our name again on our paper, but not quite yet. So after that, we're going to draw our horizon line on our paper with our Sharpie. So our horizon line is what separates the land from the sky. It's going to go straight across, just like that. And then we are going to draw our mountains. Our mountains can be any way you want them. They can be straight up and down with peaks and valleys. They can also be just like the handouts that you have, some of the pictures that you've seen where they have plateaus. Those are the straight across areas. Um, they can look like that. And then the very next thing below the horizon line, we're going to draw some plants. And you have some things that you've seen, some different types of plants and cacti. They, diff they have different looks. They have some organic shapes, or you can draw those really cool cactus with the arms coming straight out, just like that. And don't forget to make sure that you put some different vegetation and plants. They're coming, they're bigger in the front, maybe getting smaller in the back too. And you can place those all over your paper and vary them wherever. Just make sure they're below the horizon line.
Now we're ready to color. But first we have to write our name on the back of our paper. So we're going to do that with our Sharpie. And then we're going to turn it back over. And we're going to use some really cool gel crayons. But we have to make sure that we put our paper on top of our paper plate that's gonna catch our mess or anything extra that we go over with our paints or our crayons. And we're going to only color in our sky and our plants only. And remember, we're only gonna be doing that. We're going to be painting our mountains and our soil. So that's gonna be hard, but we're going to do it. And remember, our sky can be lots of different colors. It doesn't have to be just blue. We have all kinds of really neat sunset colors. Those can be those pinks and oranges, yellows and all sorts of really amazing bright colors. You do have some of those really beautiful blues and purples in the night sky as well. So you have a wide range of things that you can do. And look, you can mix those colors as well. So you have some really beautiful colors that you can mix. Some things that you may not think can go together. You can put those colors right up next to one another. And then look, you can come back with that first color and you can blend those colors right next to one another blend them together so they don't have such a harsh line and they look really really nice together they look blended in the sky all right and we want to make sure that everything is covered I know at the very top sometimes it's kind of hard to tell because of the paper plate we want to make sure all of the white of our paper is absolutely covered and that paper plate is going to catch every bit of that crown so we don't make a mess on our desk and then we're going to move down to our plants because remember we're not coloring our mountains or our our ground so we're going to color our plants that we drew now they can be green, we do see some green in the desert and our desert plants, but remember the desert doesn't get a lot of rain, so it can be other colors besides just green. We can have some yellows, we can have some browns, we can have some other colors, and this is your artwork as well, so it can be something totally different. So we're going to get ready to paint and you're going to get something that looks like milk but i promise it's not it's actually glue and water and you're going to finally get to take off that top of your soil and make sure you don't spill it we're going to put a little bit of soil in your uh, glue mixture and you can determine how much soil you want you can put all of it or you can put some of it but you're going to choose how much you want and that's going to be how thick or thin your paint is going to be and you're going to mix it up and you're going to see the consistency that's how thick or thin your paint is and you're going to use your paintbrush to stir it around and I'm choosing to add a little bit more soil because I want mine to be a little bit darker and thicker. I don't want it to be too thick because I want to still be able to paint with my soil. If it's too thick it's going to be too clumpy and too hard. So I want it to be the consistency of paint. I want it to be able to move on my brush. Now when I choose to paint on my land and you'll notice it's kind of funny it's different and there's you know lots of little bits and pieces that are coming off of the brush now that's soil that's the texture of the dirt that it's coming in now if we have enough time you can trade with a partner and look and see what type of soil they have and you can add that to your painting as well so just as you saw from the pictures in the desert of Utah and some of the other fun things. There are lots of other soil types and you can incorporate that into your painting as well. You can incorporate maybe even all five of the different types of soils that are found in Utah that we have available to you. Right, I hope that you have enjoyed this project and I'm sure it looks absolutely amazing, those desert landscapes are absolutely gorgeous and everyone is completely different and unique as they should be. 
Thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll visit the Dixon soon, and as always, stay creative!